Alright All right, y'all. Where are we at? Where are we at? We're right here, like Ocala? No, it's not Ocala. It's uh Leesburg. Leesburg, bro. You put it out here here. Boom! Leesburg, Florida. Oh! Hair shame. Here at the hair shame for the week. Boys are just showing up. DC still driving, which is typically late. We all know how Connell plays it. It's fashionably late, you know, five to ten minutes. But hey, we're here. We just got I don't know what DC got us. Actually, shout out to Vic. She actually uh ended up booking this house for the week, so we're gonna find out what we got. We'll see how she did. I'm not gonna if she did bad, we're not gonna say anything. <laughs> so we're just gonna get a really, really we're just gonna cut! Go to fishing. <laughs> <laughs> This is not on Harry's chain, but it's windy as all get out. You'll see some of these big giant waves out here. It's plague, hey, it gets rough out here in these wind. Ooh, that break's nice. I like that. Yeah, bright. Oh, that's pretty dope. That is a pretty view, man. Oh, with a beach too? Yeah, big. All right, all right, you did good. This is freaking. Brody's gonna be out here swimming. We're gonna be out there fishing our butts off. Brody's gonna be out here just chilling on a beach. Might be surfing. Holy crap! Cooking area. Yeah, no mosquitoes. This is this place for you right here. Look at all the bugs. Now you aren't even gonna get in here and get you. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Look at it, that's pretty. Yeah. Well, this will definitely work. I don't know where we're gonna be sleeping at for sure. We'll sort of see what these boys got. We got a place for, I think we got a special guest might be coming this week. I don't know that. I'm not gonna say. For sure, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. All right, sizzle room right here. It's pretty dang solid. Uh, looks like everybody's sleeping outside. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I think Mark does snore. Somebody snored. I'll sleep in here. I took the name Max for last time. I'll sleep in this little bitty bed. Be like bunk bed. <laughs> Like, what's a hat? Call it days. No, that's like that's like step brothers, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right so this is it. We've got no food yet. We're gonna do that. We actually have to run to a meeting here really quickly. But I wanted to show you the house. So can, good job, Vic. I, I approve. I approve. Bone, bone. Bone. Oh, right, so check it out. Y'all know I just got smashed by Jacob tying a polymer knot. So I've been practicing. Practicing old polymer. Actually, did a terrible job. This freaking guy. See, that's what you don't want to do right there. See that? Unreal. Gotta cut him up. You get that one a little bit better this time? Yeah, yeah, that, that one's good. See, that, one, that, one, that one's all right. Hey, big thing is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but you want to make sure that it's not twisted. Sometimes when you tie that polymer knot, and lines will go like this, no dice. You gotta make sure they're always like that, side by side. You switched it up on you, Brody. Oh. All right, y'all. Just got back from the rules meeting. Got some rods to rig. A couple more rods to rig before we take call it a night. Um, yeah. Here's Shane, pound and a half minimum here. And the key with this whole thing, it's all done from fish studies of, uh, from the state that's actually conducted on the Harris Shane. I think I think the average fish is like a 12 and three quarter inch fish. Um, and so they're guessed to be like a, about a, quite a 15 inch size limit's about a pound and a half. So here will be a pound eight, uh, I, but I assume it's gonna be a lot of these caught, you know what I'm saying? This place, if you're catching these, you better move. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to compete with them. Nah. Last week, it was quality over quantity, and I got a feeling this place, I've never really truly fished here though. I don't know a lot about this place, but everything from what I've seen on tournament history, reading some of the reports from over the years. Without making any casts, I would say this is probably the best lake in Florida for consistent numbers of quality fish. Uh, and what I mean by that is a lot of two, three, four pounders. So um, I'm hoping to get out here and sort of see what's going on. There might be some five, six, seven, eight, nines. Heavy hitters fish is going to be huge this week. Adrian, what do you think? Yeah, I got a, I got a two pounder and a two pounder. 
Hey, Adrian's got a two pound. He's, like he's got like four pounds for heavy hitters. Literally five pounds. Five pounds. Like not for, even joking. Five pounds. Five pounds. So, so he's got he's got some heavy up. hitters. To, yeah. You got some. You got some fish. Yeah, you got some beans. I know it's good. This season second, I think, or second or third. I mean, like third or fourth, or fifth. And honestly, like no joke, that's like one of my favorite tournaments of the year. Yeah, it was so awesome. Yeah. I'm sure you won seventy five grand. That was not bad. It was not bad. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> one bass. Hey, a little Marshall did not hurt the <laughs> wallet. You know what I'm saying? Hey, where's he at? Hey, he is inside. <laughs> He's inside your boat, isn't he? Hey, I don't oh, know what you're talking shit. about. He's where hey, he needs to be. Hey, Mark, <laughs> somebody needs to take little Marshall. We 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 always got we always got to not have him. He needs he needs Jimmy Ding. Where's that banana? at? We need that banana back. I think it's over so <laughs> goofy. Hey, no joke. I caught an eight and a half pounder on that bait right there. In heavy hitters and did not win big bass. That's Can you believe that, dude? That's unbelievable. I think it's cool. It's like I could brush the freaking the boat off with this thing. You know, yeah. brush, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, do y'all see? That's what I'm just saying. Hey, is it cleaner? I don't know. It's, it looks like an eight pounder. Yeah, so we need it looks like it. literally end of a brush, and the guy just went quick, quick. I bet you catch an eight. So we need to We're catch some eight pounders. We need to catch some big ones. Do you think the, the sucker bit it just because the eyes look good? Because that sucker does not look realistic. <laughs> <laughs> With them eyes, dude. Look at that. Eyeballs. Hey, I'm a, I'm a big fan of eyeballs. I mean, them. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> them are nice eyeballs. He's over like this. Them big old bass be like. Yeah, them are nice eyeballs. <laughs> um, boom. And hey, what color chatterbait are they going to bite this week? Uh, whatever on Mark tonight. Hey, Mark. Yo, Mr. Z-Man. Z-Man. Ay, ay, ay. Bro, and then you come over to the other corner. Yikes. Yeah, they're in there chilling. Hey, if you if you get a bag that's like fresh from the factory or fresh off the line or whatever, when you eat them, he's really hard and he's spi very spicy. You ever notice that? Like hot almost. Yeah. You need their softies. Let me sit on the shelf for a minute. I like them. They kind of melt in your mouth a little bit. You ain't got to chew them too hard. One pound bags. One pound bags. Lifesaver. Life green bag. What is it? Spearmint? It's like Spearmint. Winter green. Winter green. Life's, uh, it's a Lifesaver brand. Winter green mint. But it's the most addictive piece of candy I've ever ate in my life. It is legit like, it's like drugs. Some might say crack. <laughs> like crack. Some might say meth. I mean, I'm gonna say lifesavers. Winter green, bro. I guarantee you, if y'all see this, if this make the cut in the comment section, y'all know what I'm talking about on the winter green lifesaver mints. The most addictive. Yeah, the blue bag, garbage. You can throw all of them away. That winter green bag? All right, guys, let me present to y'all the Red Crest ring. This is like Super Bowl ring. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's this exactly is it. What that's like. This is it. There ain't many things. Look, the whole team don't get one, though. There ain't, there ain't many things that I say that's legit, but that is legit. Yes, sir. One thing you can say you got and Jacob Dark. Oh, don't get him fired up on that. Don't put him on that. He'll win another one. He'll win another one. You don't put him on that. He got to wait a year before he even got a shot. Oh, yeah, I want to hold him, man, just so I can know what it's like, bro. Oh yeah, that's a solid piece of gold right hey, there. Hey, you know what the, you know where they got the gold at? The jungle. Bro. The jungle. The Congo. They got out there, they dug him up, they got him. Gold Man. mine. He busts down too, son. He twinkling. I like him. Diamonds. Yes, sir. I like him. Them's real diamonds. Yes, sir, them real diamonds. They yeah, no that's something right there is valuable. Man. Yeah, it ain't no fakies. Hey, I will tell you this. This will not. I repeat, will not turn your finger purple. <laughs> yeah, or green. <laughs> or purple. Or What's that one that turn them? Green? Green, purple. They turn it ain't, it ain't gonna those. turn your finger. If you jump in the green. pool. Alright, y'all. I already know what time is. They weren't practicing. Let me see here. Yeah, it's Eastern time zone. You're using this on not. Yeah, I am. This is pretty where it's at, Eastern time zone, man. It's so equivalent, I just woke up at a free time. Yeah, I mean, you live like right on the, listen, DC, you live like right on the cusp of like the Eastern, like, time zone. I still don't get up. It's Central time zone, so like, this is the thing. Like, if you're like in Alabama and you're only like, right there, Georgia's like an hour away, 
You guys get out of here. Alright, 7 o'clock. Just got up. Feel good about yourself? I feel good about it. No, yeah, 7 o'clock. Got up at 7 o'clock. Well, if you're in the Eastern Time Zone, you're literally just right there. You're like, man, it's 8 o'clock. I'm lazy as heck. <laughs> I mean, crazy thing about that. Yeah, but like, <laughs> when you move. That's true. Do, do you lose an hour of sleep if you move into the Eastern Time Zone? Yes. No, you don't lose an hour of sleep. It, it does not freaking matter. <laughs> it's, it's the thing, it's all, it's all done by it's daylight. It's all in your head. It's all in daylight. It is daylight. All well, you probably do, truthfully, because you probably don't go to bed until, oh man, I, I don't go to bed. Oh man, hey, but 10 o'clock, man. Oh, actually, you probably, gain, uh, you probably want to gain an hour. Oh man, it's 11 o'clock right now. I don't know. Anyway, so put a little half and half in here. Anyway, we get that growler ready to roll. Put a little iced coffee, start the morning off right. <laughs> Man, you in that. <laughs> hey, what are you talking about? You, you I'm gonna start this thing with, with, with these cameras. I'm gonna get all on everybody's camera. The, him and that damn bear. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna leave him right there right now. I'm gonna let him just chill out. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too dang lucky too quick. I'm gonna get too sunburned. Hey, for real though, low key, something's up with him. All right, y'all. So, get some gas in the boat. That was a little bit crazy over the last week or so. The gas shortage down here in the south was a little bit sketch. It was, uh, even around the house in, in Chattanooga, it was like only about 50% of gas stations even had gas. Now, there's people filling up. All, I mean, there are people filling up for miles. I'm talking literally, there was a, a gas station when that first came out that the pipeline had been hacked and all that stuff. You guys know about the news that the people are just lining up. So anyway, so we're, we're happy to have gas. Like you know, there's things in life that you sort of like just perspective, okay? Just mindset. Like you're just thankful for it. <laughs> like I'm thankful for freaking gas so I can go in my boat and run around and go try to catch a bass. I mean that's just the truth. But hey, it is what it is. All right, y'all, we are out here to big old Lake Harris. Big, massive lake, tons of grass, water's a little stained, it looks like. And this is the thing, how do you dial in a fishery like this? I'm gonna at least show you how I break a fishery down a little bit, give you an understanding a little bit of how I'm gonna go about it. Uh, grass can be confusing, it's probably one of my weaknesses that there's I actually was uh, on a show the other day and somebody asked me, what is your weakness? I would say grass fishing is very confusing sometimes, especially when there's tons of it and you can't, you got to figure out something a little bit different. So we're going to dive a little bit into that um, throughout the day. I'm hoping I can find you a couple fish. So let's start there first. All right, y'all. So I just stopped in this area, and the key with grass fishing in general is really just trying to find irregularities in the grass, grass points, grass turns, isolated grass. And what I what I'm dealing with right here is you got expansive areas that are just covered in grass, like this whole place, and you have to find the intricate details. Now this is the thing; it's a little bit overwhelming. It all it always is, and there's a little too much grass, or there's a lot of grass to find those fish within it. And so what I try to do is I try to pick off the edges. If it's just an edge of grass, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily go with that, but you know, an isolated patch of grass, you know, like we have right here, there's actually, I'll show you right here off the, off this actual 360, you can see some of the, the patches of grass over there to my left. And so basically all I'm doing is grabbing that Mondo worm and I'm dragging in those areas like that. There's not really much grass around here, but there's some grass right there around you know, over here on the left. So trying to take these isolated places, almost like acting like it's a, you know, a brush pile or, a, you know, an isolated rock pile, dragging around, throwing a vibrating jig over a crankbait and then move on. Now I will spend some time fishing in some areas that have massive grass flats because it takes time to find those fish. But what I wanted to do is if I could fish these isolated places first in those areas, 
and then if I find some fish on the isolated stuff, maybe be able to try to move in to where the bigger grass bed is, and there might be even a bigger school in there. So that's sort of the, the thought process behind it. Let's see if we can get a bite first. There you go. First spot of the morning. That's a pound and a half. That's a two, two and a quarter. There we go. Exactly what I was talking about. Just fishing a little bit more of this stuff. Just casting around, firing around. Let me hit the anchor button, put it in waypoint on this. Fishing offshore in the grass. Yeah. What like you on? I'm on Harris. Okay, y'all, so we are just island around looking. And you can sort of see what I'm talking about, a lot of this grass. You can sort of tell like big grass clumps, open areas in between. It, it can be really confusing trying to figure it all out, but you just sort of have to sort of pick some stuff that you think looks good or regular. Sometimes you can grab some fish around that, but it sort of gets tough around grass, especially shallow grass. So um, I'm just looking around, sort of trying to use my Use, use these electronics to really give me an idea. I'm not really necessarily graphing fish. I'm graphing areas that I think fish are going to hold. So it's different than like graphing for, you know, schools of bass where you're actually looking for the individual fish. You're looking for areas that should hold fish, um, which can be, it, it, it's very time consuming. That is the one thing that I, I dislike about fishing, fishing grass is literally it takes a lot of time uh, to find a productive area. But it's almost like sometimes a needle in a haystack, but when you find it, it can be so magical. So that's why we're out here, you know? Practices for trying to find areas uh, that are a little bit harder to find, and, and that's exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Had to get that Mondo worm out. I've had a couple bites on a vibrating jig. Decided to pick up the Mondo, make a couple casts. Actually had a bite right there, naturally. But I've just been casting around, just fishing around on some of this stuff. And uh, it's hard, because I'm, I'm in the, you know, right now I'm in the wind, I'm trying to fish slow. A lot of wind, a lot of waves. And so I'm trying to fish sort of slow, but it's hard to fish with all that wind too. So just sort of dragging around and hopefully finding a little group of them. Horrible. All right, a little Mondo worm action. We're gonna, I don't know if that's a scoreboard or not. We're gonna weigh this fish and see. This chunky fish. Chunky, but we're gonna weigh him and see. Mm, right there, 187. So that would be a scoreboard. Those are not the ones we're after. Four, five, six pounders. So that's good, we got a couple bites. Little little mondo worm action. June bug, this is a Florida staple. If you've ever been down in Florida stained water or June bug, hey, we're almost in the month of June. So you know what I'm saying? The June bug. Hey, might be a good a good time to throw it. Let's rig another one up and go somewhere else, sort of figure out how to drag around and get a couple more bites. All right, y'all, so 
giving you a little bit of an update. I've not caught a lot of fish, but I have caught a few, caught a few on different kinds of grass. And the thing is here in Florida and really all over the country, you have multiple different kinds of grass. You got milfoil, coontail, hydrilla, eelgrass. There's so many different kinds. Stargrass, it goes on and on and on and on. So I'm not gonna get into all the details, but here on these bodies of water, um, there is Kissimmee grass, uh, there's hydrilla, and a lot of the fish that we caught this morning were on hydrilla. Um, so that was sort of like, you know, figuring out the types of grass can be a huge part of really dialing in a pattern. So. Um, hydrillas definitely seem to be the deal, but there is a lot of eelgrass as well. So trying to figure out what type of grass the fish are on, uh, it's really a huge deal when you go up north. A lot of the fish get to where um, they're on a specific type of grass, like milfoil, for instance, or coontail, um, and that really becomes a major player. Let's find us a couple more. We stand and watch. I tried to fish a little bit. Problem is grass is so time consuming, it is. Found one place in the grass, and that's just how it is. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days. Bad places, good places. Let's keep riding. Littles, little. Another itty bitty guy, about a pound and a quarter. I always like to know what these suckers weigh though, because I bet you that fish is a pound 30. And these are my scales, so they should pound 30. Let's go with it. Pound 25, about a 13 and a half inch fish. Or so, two in there. Okay. That's the kind we want. That's what you catch on that Mondo worm. Ooh. Like that, whoo, right in the top of the lip, the mouth. There you go. Beautiful fish, probably a four pounder. I'll let her go real quick here. See you later, buddy. Okay. All right, found us a spot. Got us a bite pretty quick. Isolated place. Y'all saw it. Worm, let's keep rolling. That's the thing. When they're like, a little isolated, a little patch of some grass. Oh. Exactly what you need to see. So if you actually on the active target, I cast it out there and it's doink. Felt a lot bigger than the last couple. All right, y'all. I'm gonna drop Brody off here. I'm gonna put a couple rods up. Let me grab a rain jack because it looks like it might get. It's always how it is in the summertime down here in Florida. You have those little pop up storms. Sometimes they can be bad. So I'm gonna try to put the chesty on for y'all. Hopefully, find a few more fish. 
we got to sort of expand on what we found. So I've been really trying to run that grass. Found a few places where there are some fish around it, but we're gonna have to put some more time into it if we're gonna find any more. Got off the water. Man, it is coon cow. That is, means it was windy as all get out. Bumpy, rough. Really, what it means is it was really, it was pretty bad seas out there on the pond. <laughs> he definitely, you know, some of these can stay. Plus, it's a couple of them big, a couple of them big, big, big dogs. Hey, you don't mess around with your chicken, man. I'm not trying not to, but we ain't got, like I said, bro, if I had, if we had like a charcoal grill, bro, your boy be getting, then I'll be getting down. What do you mean? Oh, 100 Bitcoin? Market. Is it that bad? Oh, bro, man. it was bad today. Joey, 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 I get, I the otters, otters, back, back, but, but, but I know, I'm giving y'all some name, Jordan Lee, if y'all have never seen Jordan Lee's Jordan. truck, JoJo, I'm giving you a shout out right now. Lucas is good too. Though. Guess what my man's truck, his tag is. The champ? Back to back. Back to back. Oh, yeah, yeah, back to back. That is so freaking Oh, that right there is just like. That's just like rubbing it in your face. Uh, you know what it is? It's like, I know. It's literally like. <laughs> All right. This is the deal. Day one of practice. I did not get to record a ton on the. On the, on the on the chesty, ran around, tried to figure it out. It was blowing like crazy. Actually, I had some three footers out there. Believe it or not, I was like, this is not like normal. It's really, it was really blowing. Um, a lot of water was coming over the front of the boat. If you guys seen a little bit of it, Brody was trying to keep the camera hit so he doesn't trash it. <laughs> so it was sort of one of those deals that the conditions were less than ideal. I think a lot of times in grass lakes in general though, um, the wind can really hurt you because it, it moves a lot of the grass around, puts particles in the water, puts, breaks up the grass and has it floating around every which way. And the bass can't use your lateral line as much, I guess, when you give them like a really good, like, un, so it's like in, in the visual side of it, it's really good in clear lakes because then they really can't see that well, so they just eat. When you say that's true? Oh, what are you talking about? Okay, so this is what, we're just getting done. We're, we're, we're just getting done. <laughs> so, hey, we're just getting the day, I, so I said, I said this. I said, listen, I said, this is how I think. I think grass lakes that are staying, I do not like the wind to blow. Yeah. Personally. Now, lakes that are clear, when the wind blows, it's, far, it, it, it's decent. But see, even clear lakes, when the wind blows, it's not good. Because if it muddies up the thing, if it muddy, muddy water and grass, with wind does not work together. I think what it is, it breaks up a lot of that grass and like particles, that, like the parts of the grass put around and the bass can't even, they can't see, they can't feel. The yeah, lateral line. It's all blown out. Yeah, it's all blown out, so they can't feel, they can't feel anything that's going on. Yeah, I don't like, think that hard. I don't think yeah, I'm just saying. That's why Jacob's so good, man. He thinks about all those little things. You don't think so? I don't think that hard. You don't think that would be. You, hey, you know what I get? I get out there, I start making some casts. If I don't get a butt, I keep on moving. But Jacob's like, man, if I come back here, if this if the wind starts blowing five mile an hour instead of twenty mile an hour, maybe I, maybe I maybe I can maybe I can get three bites. I start, this is what I was about. Like, all right, if the wind starts blowing twenty miles from the east, and there's that marsh there, all this water's gonna be clean. Yeah. They're gonna be everywhere. They're gonna be schooling. Like rainbows are gonna be in the sky. Yeah. So I try to. Yeah. Hold on, though. This place, this place here is a little tough right now. 
and I, and I and I really feel like it is fish bad. I really feel like you can get yourself a few bites, catch a couple quality ones. I feel like you'll be all right. Yeah. But it would be nice to find a group in the grass, man. That that's gonna be the key this week. And, that's I, that's and I spent how much all my time yesterday dragging around. You guys saw a lot of that. There's so much of the grass out there. It's but it's, just, it's hard because you got to fish. You know yes, you mean? can't. You can't grab around. It's not. Like again, you can find them isolated places. But honestly, dude, I, I couldn't get bit on. That I couldn't get bit. No, I, I only only bites I got on grass. Literally, I was just going down. Masters. You got one. That's it. But I mean, somebody's gonna smash and somebody's gonna find a group in that grass. And, they're gonna have bags. And it's just gonna be easy. It's easy fishing when you find them at all short grass. I feel like it reloads. It's just easy to catch if you can wander around. Yeah. You don't have to work as hard. You just drag around. Yeah. I mean, the work is finding them. <laughs> but you know what's crazy though, too? I feel like this too. I feel like grass, like they can leave in the grass as much. But typically they don't though, because they have something. But like if you if you found like a school in the grass or in tournament, like and then like they just leave? I don't think I ever found school in grass. <laughs> <laughs> this is a magical unicorn we're looking for out here on, on the Harris chain. <laughs> the unicorn. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like the reason why there's a school there, you know, whether it's you know a little thicker, a little greener, the wind's blowing five mile an hour instead of 20 mile an hour. The point, a yeah. little turn, avoiding grass, something. Good point. All right, y'all. We're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna get on the road. We'll see you out there on the way. I'll wake up first. All right, y'all. My bad. So I'm gonna leave you guys in the dark a little bit on this practice vlog just because your boy got a hurry this morning and might or might not have forgot. Chesty, camera, all that stuff. So, I just went fishing today. Now, it was okay. It was pretty good fishing, actually. Um, but I just don't know how everything's gonna go tomorrow. The conditions are gonna be very similar. Very much a lot of wind. It was coom cow today. Big time. Big time. So, what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna rig some tackle up real quick here. Uh, I think Adrian's actually gonna cook for us tonight, and then, we got a couple things we got to figure out. We got to figure out cut weight. So we got to bet on that. So who's going to be the house? And then we might have to just, we have one thing that I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, Marshall, Bo Marshall. So we might have, I might have an idea of how we're going to decide who gets him. We'll do that a little bit later. First, Rick Jack. All right, so guys, this is the deal. Take Hold up, think about it for a second. So y'all know whose turn it is to be the house. Oh man, DC, right here. It's his turn. DC, you're the house. Call the cutway. Call the. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let me think. Think about it. Under twenty-five. Well, you can't say you have to say the weight. Uh, oh. Okay. I, I forgot. Remember that? You were the, you were the house. You were the set the weight. I got to pick over under. Okay. Uh, and everybody gets to pick over under. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. So you want to be super close to the cutway because ultimately you want guys to pick under or over. And you freaking could win or lose. All right, I'm going to say... Uh, uh, what it take at... Uh, Sam Rayburn. That's with a two pound minimum. Two pound minimum. All right. If these guys are here days in a row, five fish limit with the wind and the conditions that it's at, it'd probably take 11 pounds a day in a five fish limit. I'd say 11 or 12 pounds a day, maybe 12 pounds a day. Now keep in mind that's with like a, a good fish, a three, three and a half pounder yeah. and like some keepers and then like your smallest fish might be like a pound and a half or a pounder in Florida. They're gonna grind all day long 
I'm going to say, I'm going to say 25 pounds. Let's use the over under on 25. Actually, I'll take that back. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 24 pounds. 24 pounds. I'm going to say 24 pounds. He's setting the weight. 24 pounds. Y'all heard it here first. 24 pounds, 1.8 minimum. I'm good, man. That's tough. I think I'm gonna let all the guys go first. That's a good idea. Over or under? At, at 24? Yeah. I'm 20. going over. That's for the hundo? Yeah. For, for the hundo. For my hundo, even though practice was what it was, Harris Chain of Lakes in May, 24 pound. I'm gonna say it's gonna have to go up. I hope I'm right too. Cause if I'm not, I mean, I mean, fishing trash. Cause 12 pounds a day on the Harris train, all you can catch, that's in my trash. So DC was saying place trash. Trash, yeah. Hey, well, you know, DC think a lot of places is trash. Though. We ain't on the coaster. But I'm gonna say it's gonna be up. Now I want my money, DC. Don't play with me. I need my hundo. Okay. It's gonna be over 24 pounds when I get over 24 pounds. Excuse me, that little 520s, 100, thousand pennies. I don't care how you do it. I need more. A thousand pennies, is that a, is a that thousand, a, a two thousand doge. Doge. Give me some bitcoins. <laughs> I need a whole coin. Oh. So DC set your guys' cut weight. Wait, what? He said 25 at first, and he said, oh, I'm going to go 25. Oh my God, I'll bet, I'll bet, I'll bet him a thousand dollars on the over. Over and Wheeler, he's about to have like 65 on the first day. Hey, you watch. Hey, DC just lost money. I feel bad for the guy. Actually, I don't feel bad because he just won 300 at Red Crest. We're in Florida on the Harris chain. It's gonna be way more than that. What we got going on here? Dude, so we got this is one of my favorite meals, man. My mom, she makes this for me all the time. So we have Brussels sprouts, we're gonna put that in the oven. Gonna bake them. We got some red potatoes and we got some ribeye steak. We're going hard. So the boys are all fishing tomorrow. I'm not, so I figured I'd get ahead and whip something up. And who doesn't like a ribeye steak, potatoes? We're gonna get some mushrooms. About to have a little feast. Hey, we're gonna have a good little meal, man. Hey, we're gonna celebrate Jacob's good practice. <laughs> That's what I told him. Right, every time, okay. So this is the first time in a long time that we've actually been able to talk to each other. Oh, I know. And Jacob, hey, every time he called me, I forgot how bad it sucked talking to Jacob during practice. I know. It makes you feel like a terrible fish. I, stop calling me. I said, bro, stop calling me because apparently we're on two different lakes. Yeah. Hey, the worst part is, he didn't bring a camera either, so these people didn't even, they didn't even get to see yeah, it. Oh, for real? He didn't tomorrow, bring a camera with him? Wait, let me tell oh, you, it, you're going to see tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, you will see. And if you see a Bill Lewis boat, whoop, whoop, right behind him, don't be surprised. No, I'm joking. <laughs> that, I'm jokes. No, I probably don't even put that in, bro. <laughs> they start crying. They start crying. I forgot who I'm talking to. Oh, that looks like it was some champagne. Oh, shit. Dang, boy. What's, what was your cut weight? You still sticking with that 34 number? Well, no, I don't have to pick. I know, but after two days, what's giving you a legit one? Your, your I'm personal gonna say, I'm going to say, yeah, sticking with it. You're sticking with 34. 17 a day. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. Don't get me wrong. I could see that. I could see that. Okay, realistically, it wouldn't. Uh, see, I don't know, dude. I don't know what realistically is. No idea. All I know is this place has got some big ones, and you don't need to get many bites to get to get to, get to that weight. Yeah, that's true. DUC really said twenty something pounds. Here, about as soon as they come in here, they be down. Uh, I don't want to cut it in front of the camera. I feel nervous. <laughs> so, everybody's tired about two days of practice. Yeah. Adrian is in group. 
Group B. B. So Adrian already gets little Marshall. I don't know if I want him, man. I mean, <laughs> you need. He might turn into bad <laughs> luck. I don't know. He's done. We don't use a lot of the good luck right now. He's, so, so he's this is the thing. Luck. That's what I'm thinking, boys. That's what I'm thinking. So to win, to win him because we're all tired. We're about to all actually crash out. Let's just do this. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play you, rock paper scissors shoot, right. and then you and DC. Because I want. I know you know what. Actually, you and DC play. Because I'm feeling. I'm feeling generous. Oh, and I feel oh, like I feel like I've, I've had him already. I did win the last tournament with him in my boat, so DC won one Red Crest. Oh, so. so one of us is gonna take. It. Yeah, because I think it's, it's you two. Uh, <laughs> first rock ever shooter is best out three. All right, so we're gonna go. Bam, 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 shoot. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. Scissors, rock, paper. No, whatever right. you want to call it. Is that what oh, you call it? Rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. It's rock, paper, scissors. Is it a rock Yeah. Make it out of here. Three. You got me. I got you. One, two, three. I got you. Oh! Throw that paper. What am I going to throw now? One, two, three. Got it. Oh! Got it. Three. God, if you threw rock, are you a brave man? Because yeah. you, you, I, I should have threw paper again and got, got you. Got paper. Yeah, I had but, to. But here's what, what here's what I thought you was going to do. Throw paper with me, so I threw that scissor. So I was like, all right, he's gonna ride with me on that paper. Uh huh. <laughs> all right, so this is it, guys. There you go. There you go. There you go. So you guys can actually heard. Oh gosh, if I break this streak. I hey, don't. Hey, well, it's okay. It's it's mad, you have bad, everybody has a bad day, but. Hey, look, as long as you catch a bass, he can't deem him as bad luck. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy was bad luck. He, he is catch, not. Did you luck. catch one with Jimmy? Yeah, but he was bad luck. You know? Hey, hey listen. I dropped 85 pounds with Jimmy. Yeah, yeah that was. Oh, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Nee. Uh, yeah, where is Jimmy? He's on a boat dock somewhere. No, he's on my shop. Is he? He's in my shop. I told you I need to watch a uh, life jacket and stuff like in, in, a, in a box. <laughs> in a freaking, he's, in, he's literally in a vault. <laughs> hey, he has a little code in a vault. Do you not open oh. this thing? Hey, last year, open Charlie. It's like, hey, yo. I was like, beat Jimmy <laughs> Dean. Take him. I dare you take him. Take him. Hey, this man zeroed in one of the third yeah. even daily. Yeah, he caught like two bass or something. And Jacob had like an anomaly, had like a bad day. He's like, I don't know about him. I don't know about hey, him. And then March on him one time and it's something bad. Something. I don't know what happened. Hey, no This is not for This is not for me. This is our own for me. So, <laughs> so, oh, this is, and I'm not even trying to like brag up. But listen to this. So, in the last two years, I, I, I think like my, work, my second to worst, my second worst finish is a 22nd. You know what my worst one was? 42nd. You know who I had in my boat? Jimmy Dean. Thank you. Is that Lake Fork? Yes. Dang. Yeah, but then you also won a turn. Oh, yeah, you did. No, I, I, I kicked him out of my boat. Won. I remember that. Yeah, Jimmy Dean. Hey, I, told well, I barely him. made the for, I barely won my round because I had Jimmy Dean so he strapped my Dean 360. Oh, <laughs> Facts. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That's like one of my favorite pictures, though. That is so that funny. Hilarious. It's so funny. Lord. DC was throwing you a bear. Or you oh, yeah. DC. It's like, yeah, that was classic. All right, all right, guys. All right, before we get get off on a tangent, you guys saw what we guessed for a cut weight. Did we? I thought we did or something. No, we did that already. We officially it's, it's, did. It's officially what, what is it? Pounds. Is it officially 25, 25 now? It's officially 25 pounds. What is it now? 24. I thought it was 24. Well, see, everybody picked under, so DC wants another pound. He's trying to get that. <laughs> hey, he's all like, oh, oh no, oh no. But I'm going to let you have it because it's going to be way over 25, so it don't matter. 24, 25, 24, 25. Okay, so that means i got to adjust my guest in, right? You can adjust it if you want to. It says it went 24 and a half. Oh. You said 24, and I said over. So now you say 25, I'm going to say over again. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm just guessing, though. I'm like, yeah, I just I'm hey, 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 look. Oh, you get it all. Hey, 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 look. 10-4. Let's see. Now, here it is. 
It's just a guess, DC. Okay. I'm just guessing. And what is this, 100 bucks? It's 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Hey, look, y'all want to. Ooh, I can't wait. Man. I can't wait. I can't wait till you pay us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pay up. Huh? It ain't gonna be much more. It's gonna be more than twenty five though. Bad again. <laughs> hey, 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 let me tell you something. We said it was gonna be fifty pounds. Just before practice though. At Sam Rayburn. Guess what it was? Twenty two. It was twenty two. Yeah, well, on an awesome fish. So it more than double half. This one's half. actually got more than 35 pound bites than the same right By far. Well, like at that time. Yes. Yeah. At the, this time right now. There's more, like when you, your average bites way better here. Yeah, you gotta get a bite first. Yes, it's the key. <laughs> <laughs> that that means key. 20 guys have got the kick. So what's a three and a half plus two twos? That's eight and a half. Plus three pound and a half. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 pounds. It'll take 24 to 27 pounds. Somewhere in that range. I'm just telling y'all it will. The only problem is a sucker catching, let's say 12 bass in two days. Not even, let's say 10. I mean, damn, that's 12 pounds. It's going to take 12 pounds. We don't have them. Oh, what's three and a half or two twos? What'd you say? Your math is wrong. All right, all right. Before it passes, let's see y'all. We're gonna we're gonna argue all night about this. I'm not gonna let you guys get to deal with all that. We're going back and forth, Kelly. You're gonna find out what goes down in the next video. So if you haven't and if you haven't watched, uh, if you wait a second, we're gonna get to that video eventually. And if it's if it's sort of later on, you watch this video and you're gonna go to the next one and see what happens. Anyway, oh hold up, let me redo that. Cut. We're gonna hit that. You guys know the cut weight. It's so you know how practice went so for a few hours. Might be hiding a few things. I don't know. You have to watch the next video to find out how it goes. We'll see y'all next time.